7 a.m. As the world is coming alive here on the island, the sun is coming up over Cotton Key. Looks like a beautiful morning. Laundry drying on the rails. And a nice soft breeze keeping our flags flying. And the wind generator running. But early morning and we are getting ready for our walk. But we have a surprise visitor. Some of you guys might remember Melby. Hi. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, Luca and Melby sailed off into the sunset, but Melby decided to fly back to be one of Madalena's bridesmaids. So she's here to help with wedding arrangements. <laughs> so that should be fun. Yeah. But first, we are going for our morning walk. It is that time. So dinghy's in the water, and we are ready. Madalena, listo. Okay, Tiki, you enjoy your breakfast. We'll be back in a few minutes, okay? Good girl. Mm, come on in. Early morning. Nice sunrise. Ciao, Tiki. We'll be back soon. Bye bye. Yeah. Whoa, ciao. <laughs> passa, passa, tranquilla. Hey, buddy. Careful, hey. careful. Okay. Chi si amando di lao. Okay, come on. Everybody's walk time. Yeah. <laughs> ciao. Ciao, good morning. Good morning. Oh, fairly quiet on a Sunday morning. Almost. What is this? I wanna be somebody who matters. And I wanna see the world from higher heights. And I wanna dream. And watching different shadows. Could it be that we could make it right?
The girls are discussing wedding dresses and stuff. I said, oh, simple for me. I'm just going to wear a white Speedo and a black bow tie. <laughs> elegant, no? Muy elegant, eh? <laughs> elegant. Elegante, sorry. No. Yeah, you really can't beat a walk down here in the morning. It's a very motivational way to start your day. One thing we are going to miss about this island, it is beautiful down here. And we've had the best of both worlds. We've had it to ourselves completely when it was fully deserted. <laughs> and we see it at its, you know, when it's at capacity with lots of tourists and the island's happy and making money and everything's coming back to life. So it's, uh, it's been some unique changes we've witnessed down here. But it's good to see life coming back, that's for sure. And we just going to continue with our projects, get as much done as we possibly can, and then bid everybody goodbye in the very near future. So that's our start of the day. Now, back to our walk. This is our project we've been waiting to start for a long time. We've got all the parts in stock and everything ready to build now, but it's time to replace the old propane stove and oven. We're going full electric. We already have actually a while ago, but we've just been using it as a platform or a base just to mount everything on. But now it's time to remove it and we're going to get rid of it because we're building a new platform that's gonna have dual stoves, electric on top, gas below and then a big storage compartment down underneath that where we can store all the big pots and uh, you know the instapot and stuff like that the bigger stuff that's harder to store on the boat so today it begins But it's not an easy work. <laughs> Never is. Never is. Watch it toes. And so it begins. Lots of fun. Yeah, lots of fun. It's not every day you get to cut great big holes in your counter, but hey, electric galley. Yeah. Putting in new burners. Big conversion. <laughs> Ready. <laughs> in lieu of no goggles. <laughs> Good substitution.
big piece of counter. Yeah. <laughs> a big piece. Looking at angles we've never looked at before. Hmm. Alright, cool. Guess we just got some smoothing to do and then I have to sand it a little bit. Try the router. Get the router and just but first I wanna countersink this. Yeah, sand. For be more yeah, exactly just smooth in out the, some of the in ripples. The mm hmm Good, good. <coughs> good job, Daniel San. Thank you, Sensei. Electric galley. Yeah, nice. Almost ready for testing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll have to wait a few minutes for dry the silicone. For the yeah. silicone dry. <laughs> we gotta let that sit for a little while. Yeah. That's okay. Stay away from it. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. It looks nice. It's really nice. Good job. Thank you. And there you have it. Now we have an ultra modern, fully electric galley with three induction burner cooktops. That's cool. <laughs> now the question is, how are we gonna power it? So that's where, our, first I'll take you back to basics. If you remember a few scenes ago, if you look under here, when Sebastian was cutting the holes, he had these two holes right there. And this is where we ran the new wire from the inverter over to this new GFCI protected outlet with a switch to switch it on and off so that we can control all the burners right from here. And that way when we're not using it, we leave it shut down. There's one thing I will share with you. These stoves do not necessarily just sit there when they're plugged in and not draw power. This one is pretty good. It only draws about five watts, but this guy's a bit of a beast. It draws around 50 watts when it's just sitting dormant, which over the course of an entire day, that's 500 watts over 10 hours or a kilowatt over, you know, 24 hours. So that's a considerable amount of power to consider. That's why we wanted to have a switch and make sure that we could turn them off and not drain down the batteries unnecessarily when we're not using it. Now, for those of you familiar with basic electrical wiring, you'll have no problem with this. But for those of you not, we just have a three wire hookup. So when we go back to the inverter, you'll see that there's three hookups and that's hot, common and ground. So the wire itself is gonna have a black, a white, and a green, typically for household use. In our application, of course, the boat was wired in France, they use different colors. So our wiring is brown for hot, blue for, for neutral, and I think it's green with yellow or something for ground. So you just have to figure that out. Once you know the three, it's hard to mess up because all of these are all labeled on the back for hot, common, and ground also. So we ran the wire from the inverter through the floor and across and up into here. And then we took out the hot wire and ran it through the switch first. So the switch controls the hot wire. 
and the neutral and the ground are hooked up directly to the input lines on the GFCI outlet. Then the hot wire, the black wire, comes from the switch back to the GFCI outlet and hooks into the line input as well. Now you'll notice we only have one stove plugged in here and that's because the cooktop up here is hardwired in behind right to the back of the outlet. So we've taken that wire and run it to the load side of the outlet itself. So it's hooked directly to the screw terminals at the back of the outlet and still runs through the GFCI so it's still protected in case we have an overload or a short or anything like that. So with this switch off, everything is now shut off. And if we go up here and you look at the display, we turn this on and there you go. Everything is ready to go. The nice thing about these kind of cooktops is if somebody turns it on accidentally or you know a child is touching the buttons or anything like that, first of all, you do have a childproof lock on it that you can activate. But even if they turn it on, if you've got the power is on, as you can see, and it's waiting for input, you push this on, you immediately get an error because there's no pot on the stove. If no pot, it won't turn the burner on. So turn it back off. That's a really good feature. It's also a good feature because it tells you what kind of cookware will work with the cooktop and what won't. See, if we take one of these metal pots and put it on here now, and we turn the stove back on, now we can turn that on and it immediately goes to 1200 watts. So it is actually cooking and heating up the pot as we speak. Now we don't want to do that, so we're going to turn it back off. And you might also ask, why do we want to go electric in the first place? Because it's got to be more difficult to run, all the power it consumes and everything. But we've designed the system around this completely, and it's completely run by the sun. So as long as we have solar power, we have enough power to use this for every, all of our everyday cooking needs. Another obvious question is, why do we change from gas? Are we afraid of gas, or what's wrong with gas? Well, honestly, I've had gas on the boat for 15 years. I'm not afraid of it. The boat handles it well. We have all the electronic cir uh, circuits and solenoids and everything to protect ourselves from it. But gas is something that's going to become more and more difficult to find in the areas we're going to go sailing. It's also a consumable element on the boat. When it's gone, it's gone. Until you find more, you have no more. When we run off of solar electric now, Whenever we have sunshine, we recharge the power into our lithium bank, it stores it there, and we can use it at our disposal whenever we need. That's a big benefit. So even if we find a remote island we want to stay at for several months, we don't have to worry about running out of cooking gas or anything like that. As long as we have sunshine, which we likely will because I plan to do most of my cruising as I have in the past, close to the equator. I'm not a big fan of cold, so you're not going to find me heading into northern extremes or anything like that. I mean, I've spent most of my life up there. I know it's there. I don't like ice. The only ice I want to see now is in my freezer. <laughs> but having said all of that, I will tell you that we do have gas as a backup. I've still got the entire gas system built into the boat. It's still there. We haven't removed that. But that's why this cooktop is on a pivot. You see how I've got it? It just sits up against the wall when we're not using it. And it sits down when we do want to use it. But the reason it's going up is because underneath that, we have another two burner cooktop that's going to be on a gimbal right here. Not like the old oven that was there, but just a, a flat gimbaled cooktop with two gas stoves. So it's going to have two gas burners and we will be able to use that when we're at sea. Uh, if we have an electric failure, you know, touch wood, we don't want to have that. But if we have a lightning strike or something to lose all of our electrics, we still have the gas as a backup cooking source. So there are still very good reasons to have gas and there's very good reasons to have electric. So I thought, well, why not have both? It's very simple to do. We have the space, as you can see, we have a huge amount of space that was used up by the oven here. And we never use the oven. Honestly, the oven is a great thing and some people love it. But in 15 years, I'll bet you we've used it less than a dozen times. And usually because it just makes the boat so hot because all of the heat generated in the oven, 95% of it is discharged into the atmosphere of the boat. So it makes it very hot in here. And it takes a long time because propane ovens on a boat are not that efficient. They take a lot longer than your oven at home and they consume quite a bit of fuel while they're doing that. And all of that is discharged in wasted heat, which, you know, to me is completely energy inefficient. So we now use the barbecue out back for our, our oven. That's why we went to all the experiments of the Captain Rick beach sand pizza stone. And now we have a proper pizza stone in there because that base makes that barbecue a perfect oven. It's much faster, much more efficient than here, and any discharged heat that's not used in the cooking process is just discharged out back of the boat, not inside the boat. It's much better. But that, my friends, is the basics of our new electric galley. 
And I can tell you, we will have more information and posting in the near future because now we'll be able to report on you, you know, not just uh, how we like it and how it works for us, but even when we're doing episodes of Cooking with Madeleine or anything, when she's doing some recipes, we'll be able to tell you almost exactly how much energy was consumed in the process. That's going to be a big benefit for people living on a boat because one of the, f the prime factors in determining a good recipe for a boat is how much energy and consumables it uses to actually produce the recipe. And I know a lot of you are always asking about things like that, so I'm sure you'll find it interesting. But I think that's it for now because now we have a dinner appointment tonight with one of our neighbors who's actually leaving the Anchorage tomorrow and heading back to Panama. So I gotta go. invitation guys oh. is our well, neighbor well. friends uh, wow si. they make artisanal uh, gnocchi. pumpkin gnocchi exactly and that's the sauce and then we're gonna mix it con pecorino romano wow wow, wow. Yeah. thank you so much for his uh, italian dinner this night yeah so we have a beer to Great. start or, or you, you don't like beer uh, beer one only one because I'm gonna die. Uh, okay. <laughs> a wedding diet? Ha ha ha, yes. Yeah, you got a bottle of wine here, no? Yeah. Well, but before the dinner. <laughs> yes, they have been around as well. I need to open the. Ah, you have a, everything. Si, si, si. Mm. Muchas gracias. I want to mm. 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 taste. Mmm. <laughs> I love it's the good. chili pepper. Uh -huh. Buona luta, cariño. Uh, parmigiana? No, it's a... Similar. Pecorino. Mm -hmm. What do you like? And they are un po' piccante perché uno dei... One of the peppers. So, your... This... Uh, Captain Franco's arrived of uh, Calypso. I don't know. He told me. <laughs> Isn't he supposed to be here already? Yes, but he, he don't ask me more me. I was looking forward to meeting. Yeah, you guys yeah. have been asking us about Captain Ron forever, and his boat's still here. It's anchored over at one of the marinas, but he disappeared back to Italy for a while and immediately started complaining about the cold and the lockdown and said, "I'm coming back. I'm coming back." And we understood he was supposed to be here already this weekend, but nobody's heard from him, seen him, so maybe he's stuck in lockdown now between countries or something, who knows? We don't know this. <laughs> That's Except Captain Ron. Yeah, Captain, Captain Franco. Ron. <laughs> he's a vent. Captain Ron style. Mm -hmm. Big adventure. Alright, well. <laughs> bon appetit. Enjoy. Bon appetit. Salut, guys. Bon appetit. This is uh, Pankson mm. Gnocchi. Gnocchi. Mm. Gnocchi. Mm. Mm. Oh, yum. Yeah. A little bit of this cheese because the gnocchi of calabaza, calabaza is sweet, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's always got that, you know. I love the, the calabaza gnocchi, the ravioli. Come ti sembra, no? Some morning. Guys. Well, thank you for the invitation. Thank you for the invitation. Nice to be aboard. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you again in Panama. Yeah. For your project. And it's been nice to meet you guys. <laughs> Salut. We're leaving soon. Es tu pájaro, ¿no? No, es mi teléfono. Ah, porque yo a veces lo oigo, él, él hace ese mismo sonido, porque yo... Mm.
Oh, that's perfect. That's exactly what we need. Yeah. So plus 24 hour grab bag, PL6, six persons. Okay. I think we're in business. We're in business. 